Alone in this apartment Singing in the mirror I'm wondering when the time will come When I'll see everything clear You see it's almost been a decade Since I've been on my own Welcome back to BuzzMoncton.com, chatting with John Arsenault. John Arsenault, very well-known figure in the local uh, music scene as an entertainer, as a recording artist, as a writer, uh, certainly as a uh, production guru as well. So welcome to Buzz Moncton, John. Thanks, Good to Terry. see you, brother. It's good to see you, too. You are such a busy cat, you know. Yeah. It's uh, so great to have you here. Yeah, you know, I'm reminded every day, too, that i got to remember that I have a family to take care of and, and to see them once in a while. Sure. But you know what? I'm enjoying it. It's a good time in my life right now. Oh, excellent. Uh, and speaking of that, one of the highlights, I'm guessing, had to have been that trip to Edmonton with Spoiled Rotten. Just a little bit of history. You know, I got to tell you, uh, I started with Spoiled Rotten as kind of an honorary member back in, I, I want to say 2000, 2001 era. Um, they really took me under their wing. Uh, Steven, Jean-Marc, Fuzzy, Dave, those guys there, they know what they're doing in that, in, in this business. Um, as, you know, as far as the cover band music goes, and, and actually Steven LeBlanc being a great songwriter himself, and Jean-Marc being a great songwriter, Dave knows every song ever written, and Fuzzy is, is ready to teach. And so it was a great group of guys. So I was an honorary member not even being paid to play every Thursday for five, six, seven years, however long I was there. And then you saw the exit of Steven and the band moving on to other parts of his career and then later Fuzzy and me stepping up to be full-time yeah. in that. And then Jean-Marc moved away and the band dissolved. When they got back, it was really exciting to see the original four guys get back. Yeah. Um, and right now, because of health reasons, I'm drumming for the band. Uh, Fuzzy's under the weather for the next little while and I'm stepping up to uh, cover, uh, try to fill his shoes, which right. is proven to be a task Certainly. Um, and so the Edmonton trip was uh, great it was it was great to be with them uh, that party should be illegal really <laughs> but it was a great time just as a reference point so spoiled rotten uh, played at the when when the CFL was doing business in Moncton mm -hmm. it was touchdown Atlantic and they yeah. had all the parties going on yeah. that was one of the bands that was being featured and yeah. the Eskimos were in town that that's year. right they fell in love with the band, and ever since they've taken the band to Ed, no, well, wherever the Grey Cup is, wherever the Grey Cup, yeah, to play for the uh, the Eskimo the spirit Nation, of Edmonton. Even, the spirit is of Edmonton, what it is, right? yeah. And you know what? One thing that I learned, Terry, while I was there was that this. It's not just a band performing for an audience; it's a family. And, and the people that, that go to see the Edmonton, uh, the Spirit of Edmonton rallies, mm. um, they travel from all over Canada. It's absolutely, I've never seen anything like it. CFL is that way. I yeah. Mean, any team, you'll find fans all over the place. Yeah, right? that's right. It's, it's, yeah, I wasn't a football fan before I, before I went there, and yeah. now I'm a football fan, <laughs> so it's, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, CFL breathes. Uh, we could have a whole discussion about the CFL. But we could. We're here to talk about <laughs> we could. It, would end, it would end quickly for me, because I don't know the stats and everything else. But I, I will tell you that, for now, my role in Spoiled Rotten is to fill in while Fuzzy's under the weather, and as soon as he's back in action, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't wait to myself to see the return of the original four guys in that band. Of course, and everybody uh, certainly is wishing Fuzzy well. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, we are so looking forward to seeing him back yeah. on the skins. So it'll be a, a, a good day. Yeah, it will it'll be. be. A good day. So you have quite the catalog of songs. Uh, you must, because uh, I remember you releasing a first uh, solo album. Mm -hmm. and we, uh, I think it was in 06. It was 07. It's September of 07, yeah. So now that's going on a few years, but yeah. you write, right? Yes, I do. And so you must have this <laughs> Amazing catalog somewhere because that's the only album that you've really ever done. Of yeah, original work. it's it's it is uh, the you know again getting back to what we were talking about before we started rolling the cameras was I I'm, it's always a balancing act with me um, and it, when I'm playing live it's a balance between original music and covers of course but when I'm not playing live and I'm in the studio. Um, I find myself in support roles a lot more. Yeah. So, you know, working with, uh, you know, I've been with Jared Lutz for 15 years, uh, playing drums for him uh, in an array of different projects that we've mm -hmm. done. Um, you know, re re recently with the Spoiled Rotten gig and throughout my, my adult life, really, with Spoiled Rotten, uh, learning from them. And then uh, Stephen LeBlanc is a soloist, too. I've been involved with him. Um, and now Zach Lane, who I know you're going to be interviewing in the next little while. You That's know, right. this young kid from Moncton who's just going, about to knock the roof off the dump here. Yeah. 
it's yeah. going to be something else. It's going to be something, sure. yeah, for sure. Um, and that takes us to another aspect of your professional career, and that is working with these folks uh, mm. in a fostering, almost in a mentorship role for some, through your production work, right? Yeah. Because uh, I'll take you back to the Maritime Idol. Yeah. And I don't know if you're still you know, involved with that or not, but there was a time when you were. Yes, yeah. And you had a, a big uh, hand in fostering that talent. Yeah, you know, the the the... I really got involved with that by accident. A friend of mine that was originally recording at his studio flooded. And so he came to me looking for help and said, can you take over this project? I can't do it. I don't have the means. And so I, I took the project um, and, and rolled with it. And uh, to be honest with you, I fell in love with Ron and Kathy at Maritime Idol. They're great people. I enjoy what they're... Uh, the, the, their their model, what they're doing, uh, for most mostly it's kids that are in Maritime Idol. You know, the the age ages vary, and there are some uh, adults in it as well. But primarily, it's it's between 13 and 22 that you see these kids, and I'm telling you, some of them can sing. Yeah, but many of them have been through your studio. Uh, yeah, I would I would dare say that probably 65 of those people have been through my studio. Hello, how many? Uh, probably about 65. <sighs> if you think about it, I think I did wow. three discs with them. There were you know 18 Man. on one disc. And <laughs> I might be overestimating by 10 or so, but, well, no, it, but it, it, it's, it's a huge number of I'm sure of if you do people. the math, that's, that's what right. it adds up to. And it wasn't okay. big projects. It was sing with a karaoke track, get them on a nice microphone, and, and make that blend sound sound good. As, as good as it can be with a karaoke track. But I will tell you that there was a lot of dynamite singers in that. But that takes you to uh, an aspect of your career, which is a production, which is something I know you take quite uh, you enjoy it's yeah. a great great deal yeah i do um i i enjoy the technical aspect of it and i enjoy a finished product i don't very much enjoy getting there um owning the studio and running the studio with my wife and i was an accident um and and we very much love it but we're not full-time at it it's not something that i pick and choose what projects i do and uh and we weren't uh trying to compete with any of the other major studios in the area I have a little niche where I wanted to be, and that was in the singer-songwriter category, and I don't really go outside of that. It, it was really a project studio that turned into a recording studio yeah. because of Jared Lutz's projects. Yeah, well, I just, on behalf of music fans uh, throughout the area, I just and I know you're very modest about this, uh, whatever, I don't care, but you have brought so much to this area that people probably don't even <coughs> excuse me, realize or understand in the way of your talent as a musician, as an ear, as a mentor, as a producer. It really, really matters, and I know that you're kind of the behind-the-scenes guy, not mm. so much the guy that's up front, mm -hmm. but we certainly would like to see more of that, too, because you're an amazing talent. Thank you so much for being here. Man. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. John Arsenal on buzzmoncton.com, and uh, can't wait to hear more of, uh, of your stuff come down the road. It's coming. Yeah, all right. I spent last summer in <laughs> Just watching the grass grow There's not much for a man like me there Unless I was 20 years old And so I, I packed my bags And I started off on the road I'm heading north and I'm Coming back home and it's been a, a long time How you doing, babe? I haven't seen you since then And can you believe how the time flies Without a trace in the wind I suppose it's too late for sorry I shouldn't say it anyway I meant to do what I had done to you I knew we'd meet up again someday And it's been a, a long time How you doing, babe? haven't seen you since then And can you believe How the time flies Without a trace In the wind Without a trace